really don't know, but they're, they've got to be worried in that position when you're drawn up there. Yeah, on that, on that performance that you are, you can see why plenty of people fans here, the draw is definitely a worry. I think Morgan Ferry, draw and one, it actually dwelt at the start on its first run of the year at Kempton. It's a big price, might give you a run for its money. That's going to be your Hail Mary. Our yeah. Hail Marys this week, Jason, have been useless. At least mine have, anyway. So you can go for that one, AP, and good luck. Let's go for comms. Thanks very much indeed, Ed. We're down to the last two to load. It will be number four, Mashara and Ray Dawson, who will be the very last ones to go in. And Cronell, who was in last but one with Frankie Notori, who has won this race seven times, given all this various names it's been run under over the years. That's it. Field of 28 across the track. And they're off racing over the straight line of the Sandringham Stakes. And Augmentarian gets the first call. Also, Golden Spice over on the far side is showing very good at speed in the very early stages. Also right up there towards the near side, race to the blue colours of Minwa. Meanwhile over on the far side, another one is right up there, is Morgan Ferry. Morgan Ferry is up there now together with Golden Spice, just about the first two. Meanwhile towards the near side, racing very fast and so too is Aunt Bethany. Uh, these then being followed by Golden Mayflower and then the red colours at the present moment, which are hunting up the leading group, racing alongside No Name Nikki in the very early stages. At the moment, the Zanback is just about the back marker, the late running Heredia has certainly more in front than behind. Also, Sigami on the near side and Lullaby are towards the rear of the field and over on the far side towards the back of the pack. The likes of Love Interest and also Discretion. They're racing now on towards the halfway point and it's Morgan Ferry who now comes through to share with Golden Spice. These are the first two towards the near side. Now, Mingmore is already coming under a right, so too is our Bethany. Now, travelling well over on the far side is my silent song who's making very good progress and fresh home for Hayley Turner. Right over on the far Can you get up? There she go. Yeah. has managed to beat stall 17. Good effort from both of those. I'm glad we showed that VT of Heredia. Great shout, Jason. Yeah, look, um, uh, obviously she has gone off favourite. However, from that stall position, it's amazing the amount of ground that all the runners, the, the way they converge over towards that centre to far side of the track. So they've everybody, look, look how much room there is up on the right side. I know that they've run that way late on. There's definitely a cause for concern there, but I'm afraid the second wasn't getting there quick enough. Yeah, what's the second here, AP? Your selection, Sam back. Jim Crowley had to look for room and had to come away. Yeah, he, he just got tightened for room a little bit there, but he had every chance there, you know, in fairness to Sam back, he just kept picking up late. The worrying thing for me was obviously where they were drawn, but they ended up coming up the street kind of pretty much beside one another. They obviously touch pretty close to the winning post, but I think it's too close for... Um, for the any danger of the, the winner losing it. It's right on top of the line. You have to say, look where they were drawn. You've got the winner in 21, the second Zang back in 17. So, in the, realistically, where Jim has come, he's come back and gone further left than the winner has. Yeah. Here we go again. There goes the Claxon. Stewart's inquiry. But that was, what, literally 10 yards from the line. Yeah, it was too close to the line. Uh, and it looked like you know, Sean Levy had his whip in his right hand, then he switches it into his, his left. 
Um, so he's done everything. He goes, actually, I think when he put his whip down, just in the day, oh, he pulled it back through into his right again. And he just started to drift that little bit just close to the winning post. But he put his hands down, we can see her. And she really ducked out nearly as if she was looking at the entrance when it came out onto the track, nearly. You know, she was taking a severe left-hand turn. A proud-looking Sam Scammer who led up Heredia here. His first past the post in the St Albans bloodstock uh, colours. who have had some really good horses down the years. And as things stand, Richard Hannon has his seventh Royal Ascot winner. He won the race in 2015, 2015 with a sailor. But this is Sean Levy's first ever Royal Ascot win. Rishi. Yeah, Richard Hannon has just been watching the uh, replay on the screen. The klaxon has gone, Richard, but not too worried, I'm guessing. I was worried, but she's a very good filly, and we thought she was our best chance coming here. She travelled very well. I didn't see a lot, but I watched it live. That's the problem when I watch it live. Um, but, you know, it's been a... Thanks to Andrew Stone, St. Albans Post Office, she's a home was sent to me. And... Our team had done extremely well, we looked after her and she only had one run, or two runs last year and we had to wait for a long time to come out this year. And she's, she's repaid us in spades and she's very good for this, she's in the Falmouth and you need a group horse to win a, a, a run that's going to handicap and that's, that's, that's exactly what she is. I was going to ask you about that because that's very quick progress so far and the way she's won today, given the weight and the mark yeah. today, suggests that she is a group filly. A group one filly, you think, next? Right now she is, yeah. <laughs> In her head, there's much more intelligent people to to value her that way than, than me, but for me, she's, she's always been a very good filly.